quite an introduction and quite a lecture up here. Um, good morning. I, I am honored to be at Belmont Hill at this assembly. Um, rigorous academics form the bedrock of any institution of, of learning, and it's fitting to take time to honor your accomplishments. Gentlemen, please know that all of us, your parents, your teachers, and friends of the school, have tremendous respect for all you've achieved. Bravo. Congratulations. Good for you. In, in thinking about my address for this morning, I remember the time in my own life when uh, I was recognized and rewarded for some achievement. It was after the very first year of Epiphany School, and it had been a lot of hard work. First of all, there were very long days. Our students go to school for 12 hours a day. They start arriving around 6.30 in the morning to help set up breakfast, and they usually leave after evening study ends at 7.15 at night. They, uh, in addition, there's programming for them on Saturdays, and our school year goes for 11 months a year. We start in August, and we run through July. Once when speaking on a panel with some of my students, I bragged about how our children make about two years of academic improvement each year in school. One of my students leaned into the microphone and said, that's because one year at Epiphany is like two years in any regular school. <laughs> in fact, that student was correct. In Boston, students are required to attend school either for 180 days or a certain number of hours. And another one of my enterprising young children calculated that we could send them all home on January 3rd and meet all legal requirements. Anyway, the time I'm remembering was after our first gala dinner. It was hosted at the Four Seasons Hotel, and the good and the great of Boston turned out to honor us. There were several standing ovations. But by the end of the evening, I was feeling rather good about myself. But then I drove back to Dorchester and discovered that in the rush to get all the children downtown, no one could clean the school. And this was a serious problem. We were using borrowed space at the Parish of All Saints. The whole school had to be taken down every Friday and rebuilt every Monday. The church, church charged us only one dollar a year in rent. It was not too much to ask that the place be cleaned for their use on the weekend. There was nothing else for me to do but get to work. In my fanciest suit and my brand new shoes, I swept and mopped and cleaned until about 2.30 in the morning. Finally, as I was getting ready to drive home, I noticed that the dumpster was filled to overflowing. And I knew that unless I could get that lid closed flush, the dump truck driver would not pick it up, and the church would have nowhere for its trash. So, still in my very best clothes, I climbed into the dumpster and jumped up and down, hoping to pack it all in. I jumped up and down and up and down until, pop, a bag broke. Down, I sank. As garbage juice filled my new shoes, I looked up into the sky and thought to myself, okay, God, I get it. Stay humble. Don't get above myself. Gentlemen, one of the fundamental questions all of us must confront is, what am I doing here? Obviously, you're here today in one of our most elite and successful high schools because you demonstrated intelligence, self-discipline, the folks in the admissions office recognized your promise and your untapped potential and wanted you to be part of the Belmont Health community. You may have gotten here thinking that you won the golden ticket, but what you are here about is not about winning. You will not always be in first place. You will always find someone who can solve that equation more quickly or throw the ball harder and farther. Furthermore, none of us here can take all the credit for whatever successes we may seem to have. 
We stand upon the shoulders of giants who came before us. We owe an enormous debt to our parents who raised us. Furthermore, we must appreciate in all modesty that there are many people who do not have the advantages of a Belmont Hill education. Young men who would never have the chance to sit where you are now. Therefore, we must wear our accomplishments lightly and walk with humility. I myself have been tempted to listen to others' praise and remember where it got me, garbage use. Even though I'm an educator and even though I believe in and support academic rigor, I know that academic excellence is not intended in itself. I know that on my deathbed it will not matter whether I can still solve a quadratic equation. Instead, the questions asked of me will, will be, were you kind? Did you help other people? Were you honest and fair? No man ever wants to hear, overhear others saying, about, saying things about him like, you can't trust that guy, or all he ever thinks about is himself. I'm 42 years old, and I like to think that I'm in relatively good shape. But the other day, I came back from a five-day sailing trip with our rising eighth grade. And as I stepped onto the dock, one of my darling little fifth graders ran up and gave me a hug. And while hugging me, the little darling said, Oh, Mr. Finley, you've got some gray hair coming in. And you're getting a little tubby, too. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, don't worry. The stitches are out. He's going to be just fine. <laughs>
So the photograph showed this small little Vietnamese woman underneath this enormous Jesus. Then when he asked her why she sent her child to a Christian school, her answer ran the next day as the caption underneath the photograph. She said she sent her child to a Christian school because she wanted him to go to a school that knew he had a soul. Everyone with any sense knows there is something special, even sacred, about each one of you. Years ago at church, I told that story of my hopping up and down in the garbage as part of my Sunday sermon. I laughed about how unsubtle God could be. After the service, a sweet older lady came up and said, You know, Father, maybe God tried to warn you more gently, but maybe you just weren't listening. <laughs> maybe it's true. Maybe I didn't have the humility to hear what I needed to hear until I was needy in the trash. While I applaud your amazing academic achievements, more than that, I stand in awe of who you are as young men and your capacity for love and compassion. You're at a stage in your life when you're honing your skills and talents. Day and night, it's all about you and your growth and success. But your achievements are not ends in themselves. Your gifts are part of something greater, more than any of us here can imagine. God bless you. It's been an honor to speak to you today. Thank you.